Today we're making two easy homemade Japanese chicken katsu curries, one of which uses just three items. I've got to be honest, the only time I've had chicken katsu curry is at a place called Wagamama's where they serve it like this. So chicken katsu is kind of like a sweet, hot kind of curry with like a breaded chicken in there. It doesn't have to be chicken though, apparently. You can do like pork katsu and stuff like that, which sounds amazing. You can do a chicken katsu pizza. Oh, that sounds really, really good. It might not be 100% authentic. There's something with the sauce in a minute on that note anyway, but I'm pretty convinced it's gonna taste blooming stonking. Let's go. All right, so let's start off uh, with an onion. And I apologize if any of this goes out of focus today, but I'm just trying a little bit of a artistic, look at that, look, I've never seen an onion look so beautiful. And I have to be honest, we actually very rarely buy onions like this. We just basically will buy them frozen and they're already pre-sliced because it stops you crying. Although I'm not getting emotional just yet. All right then, so there's my onion and there's a couple of things we can do with this. I'll come onto it as we go, right? Let's get some garlic five garlic cloves to so just hoovering that up. That is a lot, I've still got to get the rest of that. That is a lot of garlic, my friends. Here are some carrots, and unfortunately I have given away the carrot vegetable peeler that we used in the recent novelty gadget video. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Other than uh, the onion and the garlic, you could have used ginger. I'm not a massive fan of it. One thing I should say when I was looking at different recipes and things, the only katsu I've had is the sauce has been smooth and that seems to be the way. However, it's a curry, right? There are versions and that's probably authentic too where you have chunks of potato, chunks of carrot in there, a little bit of texture. And I think honestly, if I had that, I'd probably prefer it. It just seems like there'd be like more meat to the bones or veg to the curry as the case may be. If I could read the markings, I'd be putting in 600 milliliters of water right now. Deploy chicken stock cube. Looks like lemonade. So our lemonade looking uh, chicken stock there, along with our prepared veg from earlier, like I say, if you're not doing chicken katsu, you're vegetarian, just get more vegetables in it and maybe don't do what we do to them. Some oil for the pan, some plain flour and some curry powder, heat of your choice. And also for a little bit more sweetness, we've got honey, which we can add to taste and the sriracha to add some more heat as needed. Oil's going in with our vegetables. So let's just get that on the heat, get that oil going. We're gonna cook these vegetables on their own, make sure the oil's nice and coated. So these can soften and cook down, but they play a critical part. Now, what we're doing there really with that flour, we're gonna potentially make our own sort of bodged roux stock saucy thing to all blend in together. Now for an authentic recipe, apparently a lot of people, even at home in Asia, will get some actually pre-made roux that they kind of melt and dissolve into water anyway. Like a glorified stock cube in some ways. I didn't wanna get that, but you can get a lot of them online. It's completely up to you. Yeah, I think if my local supermarket sold one, I would have done it. There's an Asian supermarket near me that does, and there's loads of different flavors and strengths. You can get different brands, so like, fill your boots. Fill your boots with cat Sue. And that is a true fact. If I ever owned a cat, I would probably call it Sue. I should have called you hot, because then you'd be a hot dog. I love how his tail just curled. He's like, yeah, I heard the joke, but I just didn't find it funny. And neither did you or I. <laughs> It's been about 10 minutes. We kept it stirring so the onion didn't char too much. For that roux effect, we are getting that flour in. And of course, probably the hero ingredient out of all this, I can be your hero, baby, is the curry powder. So we'll just stir this through and let it coat and cling to the garlic, the onion, and the carrots. In comes the chicken stock. Ah, just poured some on my leg, brilliant. Ooh, nice. Very soothing. We're gonna add in a bay leaf. We talked about this in the previous video, like, does it do anything? It actually does a lot. Do remember to fish it out though. A few shakes of uh, low salt soy sauce. A little bit of honey now. <laughs> I'm trying to get it onto the bay leaf. And sriracha too. So if we just stir this all together and start to bring it up to a slow simmer, our sauce is nearly there. And some people will have it chunky like this and that's absolutely fine with the potatoes in it too but i've only had it smooth like i said so we'll probably do something else i've got to be honest this smells amazing and we can control the thickness of it we can actually rewarm it as well just before serving so it's nice and hot extremely rare for me the most important thing i think to have warm will probably be the chicken so we'll do that last so let's get the rice done i've got some uh, water here and it might look a little bit murky because that's the same jug that i used that we made the stock in and i don't mind that going in with the rice whatsoever with a little bit of salt so I'm gonna use a jasmine rice because basically we've got an absolute mountain of it in the house. This is a sticky rice. Okay, so whilst I'm waiting for that to boil, completely unnecessary and off track, I am just gonna preheat my oven. And the water 
is ready for the rice. Lid on, 15-ish minutes. Okay, here is a large chicken breast. Uh, we're just covering it in baking parchment either side. Just to level it out to make it look nice and flat, which actually does look bizarrely like what we're using for our bodged version. You'll see that in a minute. Alrighty. Now let's look at that stereotypical, for me, Wagamama's chicken katsu look. You get served, and this is my opinion, I've not researched it that far, but you get that chicken that's been breaded and fried and cooked, you get those slices with chicken exposed either side. However, some versions I've seen, the katsu is completely encased, and for me, that looks amazing. So if you want to do it classic style, just bread it like that and slice it once it's cooked, or do this. Dunkin' Station, so plain flour with some pepper. Uh, we've got some beaten eggs and these are some panko breadcrumbs that look a little bit like Rice Krispies but real good crunch. I'm gonna take a piece of chicken into my flour, drop it in the wet, into the panko and your dry hand to coat it all over. Now if you're not fully happy with it, back in the wet, straight back in and boom. I've got a lot of that to do, I'm gonna do that now because otherwise things will burn. The rice is nearly done. We want to get this cooking. This is actually only two thirds of that chicken breast where we've rolled it twice, it's puffed it up and given us loads and that fried all over, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, so our rice took 15 minutes, that water is fully absorbed. The cool thing with rice, you can shape it if you want. I'm not gonna do this for the main dish, um, but this is just a ramekin that I've lightly greased. I think it's part of me growing up by the sea, like I just wanna make a sandcastle really. Other than that, I'm just gonna get an island of it and just kind of put it here for now. Kind of like the irony of using a Christmas plate to do this, but... The fact this is lightly greased, it should just pop out. Well, hey, so that sauce is looking good. A nice, slow, steady heat. One other thing to add in is some garam masala. Pretty much in every single katsu curry recipe. And you could probably get away with just using the curry powder if you want. But as you can see, this is thickening up. Now this is where I've made up my mind and you can literally freestyle this. It's completely up to you. So with the sauce, if you want to get it super smooth, you can pour that through a sieve and hold back all those onions and carrots and garlic, all that flavor we rammed in there, especially the bay leaf. That's going out anyway. That's a non-negotiable. You could just omit the sieve altogether and have it like that, like we talked about. Again, bay leaf, non-negotiable. You could sieve, say, half of it to reduce the ingredients in there and then whiz it up. But we're going to whiz all of it up because I want to keep that flavor in there. Apart from the bay leaf, that's non-negotiable. Let's remove the non-negotiable. Oh, you're hot. And of course the appliance I used the other day, the minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a big stick blender. I think you guys like that, thanks. Whereas some of the younger audience were like, hey, is that a song by Drake? Boom, you see that? Look how it's thickened that up. Beautiful, all that flavor is whizzed in there. If you really wanted to be picky, you could pass it for a sieve if you want also, but this is good. If you've done the dunking with a panko, you might find you've got a little off cut of panko mixed with egg. You can see that it's frying away like a charm. So I'm going to keep it on a steady heat. Uh, bear in mind, as you add the chicken in, it might lower the temperature of the oil, but that's fine. You really want to try and optimize the cooking through of the chicken. It's going to look good on the outside, but we don't want a medium rare katsu. Woo. Keep your eye on this, very dangerous. Just keep moving them and push for a nice golden consistent color. Yes, that chicken is angry, loving the color on it. I love it. Now, I was gonna do this step blindfolded, but there's hot oil around and I wanna have it all warm. You might remember a moment ago, I said that I preheated my oven. That's because in the oven right now is this. In this packet are some breaded chicken steaks. You get them in most supermarkets. You could even use chicken goujons if you want. You can air fry it too, or we'll bake it. About 25 minutes in there. And I could have made the recipe that we did easier, but of course we could have taken it up a notch so, so much more. But if you don't want any of that complexity, that breaded chicken is your chicken solution. You can get yourself a packet of microwave jasmine rice. This cooks in the microwave in two minutes. And the sauce, you cannot get any lazier than this. I was actually just gonna get a generic curry sauce, but they actually do do katsu style curry sauce in most supermarkets now in jars and sachets. So all the effort we put into it, and you can just get it in this. And it is a very similar color. We'll warm this up in the same microwave. 
And you know what, even for this bodge one, maybe we will do the rice mountain to make it look flash so you can impress your friends in like literally 20 minutes. Obviously, I really hope you want to try the recipe one, but you know what, it's a midweek, you just want to bodge it, you want a cat, Sue? Come on, Sue, let's get you a cat. Uh, look, two, one, boom. Couple of minutes on the sauce. Sticky jasmine rice. Woo! We'll take our cooked chicken breast straight off the baking tray <laughs> next to its companion there. And this time we'll do those stereotypical slices that you get all the way through like that, okay? And there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Visually, that's how I've had it served before. I just feel that all round crunch is gonna take it up a notch. Complete personal choice. Oh, nice. Here we go then folks, straight from the microwave. That is our katsu sauce drenching that chicken. Oh my word. And despite the temptation to want to maybe add some sesame seeds, some spring onions to finish, I'm just going to put it up against the other one. I've transferred this to a jug. I love how chunky those pieces of chicken are. Drooping that over, just to still see a little bit of that chicken. Oh my word. I know we bodged this with three ingredients, but that token rice mountain does add something, I've got to admit. Just don't know what that sauce is going to be like. There's something about this though, the effort in the rice, that gorgeous sauce and the 360 covered panko chicken chunks. Oh my goodness. Let's try this one first. Like complete with rice mountain. Lovely. Don't know if you need the rice. Do you want to eat the rice? Okay, she wants to eat the rice. Oh, a bit rubbery. <laughs> a bit spongy, isn't it? Am I going to know which one's which? We can guess in a minute, yeah. Okay, I so think I can guess already. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> right, try a bit of this then. Okay. That sauce tastes weird. Are you okay? God, that's it's quite um sharp. Yeah. That's really sort of <clears throat> bitter. <clears throat> it's like stinging in the back of my throat. It's like fruity, then all of a sudden just comes in with like a real like, like acidic sour note, yeah. doesn't it? That's a horrible sauce. I didn't make that. Okay, <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> sauce. <laughs> okay. Next. So, so my theory was with chicken katsu when I was looking into it, like you, you don't always have to serve it like the Wagamama style. Sometimes they have it like a curry. It's all blended in together yeah. with chunky veg and everything. Oh, okay, but, but nice. But what I did was fully coat the chicken yeah. in my own little homemade sauce. Actually, I'm gonna try the rice. <laughs> See if there's a difference to that. Yeah. That's good. That's good that, rice. That is good. Oh my gosh. That's a lot nicer. That's good, isn't it? That has not got that sharpness in the back. I mean, this was a bottled jar sauce thing. I'm so sorry to the company, whoever that was. Um, other ones are available, so it does get you out of trouble. That is good. That's really good. But even the colour, look how bright orange that is. Mm. What did they put in that to get it that colour? This is really nice. It is actually all right. I was worried because Mrs. B doesn't like too much heat when it comes to curry, but you can obviously tweak different powders and stuff. I looked at the ingredients in that jar and I would say like most of it is stuff that's gone in there plus a lot more other bits. I was just about to say that's not that hot, but I've just had a more sauce than this. But it's nice hot, it's nice. And they were both, I mean, this one was ridiculously easy to make. Proper, proper like emergency thing, jar of sauce optional, but maybe just make the sauce. The chicken was fine, the rice wasn't actually. So I would say homemade rice. If you're in a hurry, get the breaded chicken. Yeah, I think that's the only substitute. Mm. But yeah, other than that. Yeah, make your own sauce. Was it easy to do? Yeah, yeah it was. I mean, two at the same time was a bit, I was gonna do that blindfolded, but I'm so glad I didn't now, because blindfolded didn't even justify the sauce. I'm glad you didn't do it blindfolded. You were here on your own. Well, there was a pan of oil just there, and actually it still is just to one side. So I'll leave Mrs. B to eat that. Uh, so I guess that kind of proves that it's edible and yeah, all good. Uh, give it a go if you wish. I'll do the full recipe type up on the website. If you do any versions, take a picture, share it with your social media. I'd love to see it and I'll see you later. Bye. Sorry guys, before you go, I just had like another bite of this. I got a bit more of the sauce out. I have to say, I don't think I sold it enough. That is incredible. Honestly, that is so good. You must try it. It really is. Bay leaf optional.